Hello, this is Olivia Brown with WJ Now. Today we have a very special guest, Mark Fincham, who is running for the Arizona Secretary of State. Welcome, Mr. Fincham. Well, thank you very much for the invitation. I always love coming here. One of the big things that just happened to you is that you were banned on Twitter, and then you, uh, right after that, got it back because of Elon Musk. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, this is kind of one of those things that just fall, falls into one's lap like a gift from God. So I was on a plane on the way back from Orlando. We had been at, uh, a number of us were at the... Um, election integrity form for uh, the audit Florida folks. And I get this random text saying we were just banned from my campaign manager. Wow. So that was midday on Monday. I get on the ground and he had already put a tweet out about why were we banned? Because we weren't told and we were just got kind of this snarky statement. Well, you've been banned typically this lasts a week or longer. Wow. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, Twitter jail, what did we do? I mean, we're not that controversial. We simply state fact. So the next thing you know, um, we put it out in a, uh, an email to our base, and Jenna Ellis picks up on it. She does a tweet. Hey, Elon, what's up with this? <laughs> and instantly he responds with, I'm looking into it. That's amazing. 41 minutes later, our Twitter account was reestablished. And of course, we've been thanking Elon Musk for, for that. And I think what, what's happened with that, uh, the, the media, the left fringe media has just gone berserk over Elon Musk is supporting Mark Fincham. Well, no, that's not what it is. What it is, is he was very, very succinct in saying, we need to have a fair playing field so that everyone who wants to compete in the arena of ideas has a place in the arena. Exactly. And I, I, my hat's off to the man. I don't know what his politics are. I don't really care, quite frankly. What he did is he reset, began to reset the paradigm for those of us who have got a different opinion than the fringe left. So, and now we went from, I think, 51,000 followers on Twitter to we're over 74,000. That's amazing. So apparently there's a lot of people out there that agree with his move and he brought attention to our campaign. And I've got to believe that somebody in Twitter zone probably got walked out the door for that. How do you feel being endorsed by President Trump? Um, it's, a, uh, it's an honor, quite frankly. I mean, you look at all of the success that President Trump brought to the United States. In, in spite of the headwind of individuals dedicated to continuing the status quo, to protect the status quo of what I call the power cartel, You've got Democrats and Republicans working together to thwart a sitting president. Yeah. Um, I, I, the only solution to that, in my opinion, when your administration takes over, you fire everyone. Now, Calvin Coolidge, for example, didn't believe that anyone should have a permanent job with the government. No unions, no this. Now, I'm sure that that's going to be a controversial thing that somebody's <laughs> going to make about this broadcast. but. When you think about the concept of the president brings in his administration mm -hmm. to extend his agenda over a four year period, President Trump's endorsement of me came for one reason. And he's told me this a number of times. You had the courage to say what needed to be said, when it needed to be said, and you stood up when nobody else really would. I. I can't put a finer point on this. I've been called a dangerous man just <laughs> because know. I'm asking questions. Yeah. And uh, the thing that uh, I find terribly offensive is the more dangerous man is the one who was elected to ask questions but doesn't. That's true. That's the dangerous man. Another very dangerous man is Adrian Fontes, who you are running yeah. against. Yeah. So there are a lot of things that people don't know about him, dirty details, like he actually was a defense lawyer for Mexican cartels. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, he was involved in the Fast and Furious debacle. Mm -hmm. With um, Obama. That, with Obama and Holder trying to create this idea that there was a gun running program. Well, they were the gun runners. <laughs> okay, so they were working with the Mexican cartels. Adrian Fontes was the uh, lawyer, he should know better, was the lawyer working for the Mexican cartels to represent the individuals who were attempting to engage in the gun running scheme. He also 
was the defense attorney for a woman who was trying to acquire a Stinger missile. Wow. Um, we, and we can only imagine that that probably would have been used against our law enforcement aircraft. So then we've got the felony flight mm -hmm. arrest through uh, ASU. Um, and I've spoken to the arresting officers, so no matter how much they expunge the record, which I think yeah. they've done, the fact remains that he was arrested for felony flight. Tell us a little um, bit more about that. What do you mean by that? Um, well, from what I understand, it was a traffic offense, but reckless endangerment of people. High-speed chase, three miles long, people could have been killed, poor judgment. I mean, those are the kinds of things that, going back to the cartel thing, do you really want to have the de facto lieutenant governor of this state, which is what the secretary of state is, Yeah. number two in the state, do you really want to have that individual have direct ties to the cartels? I think not. I think that, pe that that's of concern to people. Then you add some of the things that he did as the Maricopa County recorder, attempted to mail out 200,000 ballots to voters who didn't ask for them, primarily Democrats, had to be stopped by the courts, had to be stopped by his own Secretary of State, Katie Hobbs, which I'm not quite sure how that came to, to pass. Well, because she, even she, even she was like, <laughs> this whoa. This is outside of the law. Right. And even, wasn't it uh, even uh, Arizona leftist media said, whoa, what is Adrian Fuentes yeah. doing? Yeah. In fact, Lori Roberts, uh, interestingly enough, as much as she hates me, um, she even said in September 2020, this guy makes up the law as he goes. This won't end well. Well, the Secretary of State is an executive branch officer. They're not in the legislature. And... That those positions across the United States, the fringe left media has been saying, oh, that secretaries of state, conservative Republican secretaries of state are going to change the law. No, take a deep breath for a second. Under our constitutional republic form of government, we have four branches of government. We have the legislature, which is the only branch that can change law. They're the ones who write law. You have the executive branch, the governor and secretary of state, the governor signs law into effect. And then, of course, you've got the judiciary, which they're the ones who are supposed to call balls and strikes. If, if somebody is outside of the law, the judges are supposed to do something about that. And then, of course, my favorite branch is the fourth branch of government. That's the people. Mm. Um, Justice Ginsburg, for example, in the IRDC decision said, essentially, uh, that the people are a super legislature. Yeah. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Yes. They, the people have the opportunity to set matters straight. A really famous guy back in the 1700s brought that one up. So yeah, Adrian Fontes, uh, quite frankly, is a guy who skirts the law, acts outside of the law, and even represents those who violate the law. And I, I hardly think that that's an individual that we want to have as the number two executive branch office, second only to the governor. Speaking of the people being the number one legislatures, there's only about five days left until the election. Mm -hmm. What are you doing, besides being here with us at the Western Journal, to get out the vote and show people Adrian Fontes is the wrong candidate, even though Democrats are spending big bucks on him? Oh my gosh, they're spending, they're outspending us about 15 to 1. Whoa. And what's happening, um, we're, we're talking to independent voters and to even to Democrat voters. And what we're finding is they're sick and tired of the negative commercials on every channel all the time, every 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. They're sick and tired of it. Instead of going that path, we have simply stated fact. Um, we're trying to promote a positive image. And it, from the Democrats and the Democrat Party, it's 100% negative all the time. So between this interview, uh, <laughs> as soon as we're done with this, I have to jet down to Grand Canyon University for a, a short tour, then Newsmax, and then, I, I mean, it's just a, a, an endless stream. Uh, Victory News, Flashpoint, these all of the, it's going to be a long day. In fact, every one of the days coming up until Tuesday, Tuesday's probably going to be the longest day, but every day is filled with interviews. We have the G AZ GOP bus tour that's going to happen Saturday, Sunday, and Monday all across Arizona. Uh, Carrie Lake, uh, our future governor, <laughs> uh, Abe Hamaday, myself, Blake Masters, I've uh, been given to understand uh, Josh Hawley and some really dynamic U.S. Senate um, sitting senators, hopeful for mm -hmm. re-election, some of them, 
um, are going to be with us. So it's going to be a fantastic opportunity for people to to see us, hear from us, and just get everybody out to vote. It's I it's your suffrage, okay? If you don't go out and vote, think about what would happen if someone told you you can no longer vote. So you, you've just got to get out there and get that done. I'm always astonished when people are saying that, no, I'm not going to vote this year. Oh, I don't think it matters. Whoa, so many people fought for that right for you to be able to do that. Even though my next question to you was going to be about DAS, which is the Democratic Association for Secretary of State candidates. <laughs> George Soros has yeah. put big bucks into this. And how are they influencing this election? I've seen so many billboards about Adrian Fontes. They said, quote, the bipartisan candidate. And I cannot no. find any more extreme candidate. Didn't he support Bernie Sanders? He's an extreme leftist. He's a Marxist. He, uh, I mean, DAS is a political construct, in a, which is a collection of officers, which once you're elected Secretary of State, you really need to take off your political hat mm -hmm. because you have to make sure that everyone has equal access, has, has unfettered access to the election system. That means Libertarian, Green, Democrat, Republican, Independents, um, one of the things that I want to make sure that we do in my administration is to engage in a serious overhaul of the outreach mechanisms. Mm -hmm. I want to reach out to independent voters and see to it that if they want to run for office, that they can do that without having to join a party. That's very interesting. I've heard um, that. You know, I, I just want to make sure that we have a level playing field, no thumb of influence on the scale of elections, we, we have everyone has the opportunity to express their ideas, their thoughts, their, because nobody's got a, a corner on the market on good ideas. Mm -hmm. Now, when you, you may have a good idea, but when you try to implement that good idea, suddenly you get into the mechanics of dealing with people who disagree with you. And it's how you negotiate that. Um, and frankly, this is the legislature's responsibility. But seeing to it that individuals who have ideas can compete for the seats in the legislature so that those ideas can come forward. That's what I hope we, we can do. I think that there's an opportunity there to make sure that the underrepresented in government are no longer underrepresented. What else would you bring to Arizona as the Secretary of State? Well, we've, we've got a serious problem with election security. Now, there are some of the establishment types who, thank heavens, are about to be out of office. <laughs> who don't believe that we have a problem. Well, my good friend, Senator Sonny Borelli, um, has yesterday presented, and, and now as I've been given to understand is probably on Bannon, uh, Bannon's war room as we speak, a significant problem with mismatch of mail-in ballot signatures. Interesting. If we can't secure those, that means that we have a serious defect in the system. Now we've seen time and time again, signatures that the name doesn't even match the voter registration card. So we've, we've got to get our handle on that. And um, right now there's a lot of people talking about, oh, well, he's gonna, Fincham's gonna do away with mail-in voting. Okay, again, the executive branch office of Secretary of State does not have the authority to remove law. Mm -hmm. Everything that has to be done in the elections procedure manual is in the furtherance of existing law. Now, one of the other big things that we've got to do, in fact, we're already working on this, is to take the 2019 elections procedure manual and update it so that it reflects current law, because it doesn't right now. It's the rule book, if you will, the recipe book for all 15 counties to run their elections so that we're all playing on <laughs> a level playing field so yes. that everybody knows the rules okay um, so those are some of the big things that we've got to get our hands on and your slogan <laughs> is just follow the law right it's more than a slogan that's <laughs> what i've been dedicated to for most of my life well thank you so much for joining us today we appreciate you taking the time such an honor to have mark fincham with us the uh, hopefully soon new arizona secretary of state